Hello and welcome to Bay College's video lectures for Math 095 Basic Algebra. We're going to look at section 710. And this section covers solving quadratic equations by factoring. So we're going to use those tools of factoring that we learned in the previous section. The first thing we're going to look at is what is a quadratic equation? Well, before we actually look at the quadratic equation, we're going to kind of define why is it called a quadratic. Well, if we're looking at a rectangle or a square or something of a rectangular nature, in order to find its area, we have to take length times width. Well, if these contain variables, like such as x, we'd get x times x, which is x squared. Quadratic equations deal with a squared variable. And the reason why we call it quadratic is because it helps to describe the behavior of any four-sided object. So if we have a four-sided object, we're dealing with quadratic. And because it is an equation different than an expression, up to this point we've only seen quadratic expressions that we could factor. Well, now we're going to look at quadratic equations, this equal sign. Now, a quadratic in standard form is ax squared plus bx plus c set equal to 0. Standard form is important because in order to solve a quadratic equation, you have to make sure, first of all, it has to be set equal to 0. And the reason why we set these equal to 0 is because of something called the zero product theorem. Now, don't be intimidated by that term. Zero product theorem is actually something you already know. It basically is a statement. If a times b equals 0, then either a is 0 or b is 0. What that says in the simplest of sense is anything times 0 is 0. And that's something at this point in algebra that we truly understand. 0 times anything is 0. So how do we use that in solving a quadratic? Well, if we can break it down into its factors by factoring, we can say, well, these factors, if any of them is e equal to 0, then the entire equation, equation would be equal to 0. It would be true if we could factor this and any part of it would be 0. 0 times anything is 0. And that's how we use that. So let's take a look at some examples. Now, these are already in a factored form. If we were to FOIL this out, we would find something of the form ax squared plus bx plus c. But they're already factored, so we can actually explore that zero factor theorem. So if we have a factored quadratic and it's set equal to 0, we can essentially take each factor, because this quantity is being multiplied, so we call it a factor, and set it equal to 0. So I'm going to go over here and say, well, if x minus 4 equals 0, then 0 times anything is 0. It will make that statement true. So I can add 4 to both sides and find x equals 4. If I plug that in, 4 minus 4 is 0. 4 plus 3 is 7. Well, it really doesn't matter what this factor is, because 0 times anything is 0. So one of its solutions that we call zeros, another thing we call the solutions are roots. So the root or 0 of that factor is x equal to 4. But what about this factor? Because there's two factors, and they each have a variable. Well, we could do the same thing to this one, x plus 3 equals 0. And if I subtract 3 from both sides, I get x equals negative 3. If we plug it in to check, well, negative 3 minus 4 is negative 7. Negative 3 plus 3 is 0. 0 times anything is 0. So really, we just have to worry about that factor being 0. So we find that our zeros or roots are x is 4 and x is negative 3. So I can say the solutions or the roots of this equation are positive 4 and negative 3. Let's look at this one here. It's in a fully factored form. So the first thing I look is, how many factors do I have? I have one, two, three factors. Well, this factor is a constant. It doesn't contain a variable. So I'm, I'm aware that it's there, but it's actually not going to change anything. Because if either one of these are 0, 0 times anything will be 0. So I have to see, uh, look at each factor individually, x minus 5. What value of x would make this 0? And I could set it equal to 0 and solve for it. But I know 5 minus 5 is 0. A clue to these is it's always going to be the opposite of what you see here. If it's negative 5, this would be the opposite. So I know that one of its roots is going to be a positive 5. If I look at this one, what plus 7 is 0? Well, the opposite of 7, if I combine them, would be 0. So it's always the opposite of this number. Like I had here, negative 5 
its 0 is positive 5. If I have positive 7 here, its 0 is negative 7. So 5 or negative 7, this is like the a and b we saw when we defined the zero product theorem. This value makes this quantity 0. 5 minus 5 is 0. 0 times any factors is equal to 0. True statement. Negative 7, well, if this factor is 0, those factors multiplied by it will equal 0. Now, we look at this. This is a little bit more complex because we see we have these didn't have coefficients in front of those x's, but these do. But we're going to approach it the exact same way. The first thing I'm going to do is say, well, how many factors do I have here? I have one, two, three factors being multiplied. This one is a variable, so I have to say there is something that could make that 0. And a lot of times, we overlook this one because it's all by itself. It's not in those parentheses, but we do have to consider it. Now, this one we didn't because it was just a number. This one is a variable. So what value of x would make this 0? Well, if x is 0, then 0 times anything is 0. Now, this one here, I'm actually going to work this one out, 2x minus 1. If this factor is equal to 0, well, let's see what I have to do. I have to add 1. So I changed its sign by moving it across the equal sign. And then I have to divide by 2. And when I do that, I get x equals 1 half. x equals 1 half. If I put that in here, 2 times 1 half, well, half of 2 is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. 0 times anything is 0. So that would be another one of my roots. And then uh, if we look at this one, if I write that out, 3x plus 4 equals 0. I can subtract 4 from both sides and then divide by 3. So I get x equals negative 4 thirds. And just to check, negative 4 thirds times 3, the 3's would cancel. Negative 4 plus 4 is 0. 0 times anything is 0. So these are my roots to this equation. So we solved it because it was in a factored form. Now I just want to go back and look. When I said these were the opposite of what you see in there, that's simple enough because it's a simple equation. But when they have these coefficients, you can write it out and solve for it. Or you can think of it this way. Just like this was the opposite, well, this is going to be the opposite of this over that. Let's see why. When I worked it out, I subtracted 4 from both sides. So this is the opposite of 4. It's negative 4. And then I divided by 3. And this is how we'd solve it each time. The opposite of negative 1 is positive 1. And then I divide it by that coefficient of 2. So a quick and easy way to get to it is say the opposite of this over that. So it would be positive 1 over 2. We have 1 half. Negative 4 over 3, negative 4 thirds. So that's just a little shortcut because you're going to be doing it over and over. Um, but if you need to, do it this way. That's just fine. All right, so this one here, I'm going to leave for you to attempt on your own. Find the zeros, or otherwise known as the roots, that would make this a true statement. All right, let's look at uh, some more examples. And a quadratic is ax squared plus bx plus c equal to 0. Well, we have to have it equal to 0, just like we saw all those other examples, in order to solve the equation. So we have to put this in standard form before we begin. So if I look at this, I say, well, there's a 6 on one side. I have to get all my terms on one side. So I'm going to subtract 6 from both sides. 6 minus 6 is 0. Minus 6 from this side, they're not like terms. So there we have it. Now it's set equal to 0. Now I'm going to use all those tools I learned before on how to factor, and I'm going to factor this. If we recall, the first thing we want to check is a greatest common factor. 2, 4, and 6 have a common factor of 2. So I'm going to factor it out. And that's going to leave me with x squared plus 2x minus 3 equal to 0. Now I can factor this. I, because this coefficient is 1, I can look at that and say, what are the factors of negative 3? That sum to 2. Well, the factors of negative 3 are 1 and 3. Well, 1 times 3 is, is 3. But since it's negative, one of them has to have a different sign. So they have to have different signs. So I'm just going to put my signs in there because I assess the sign. Which one is positive and which is negative? Well, because we're 
combining them, the larger value determines the sign of the middle term. Well, the larger value would have to be 3 and not 1. So the 1 would be negative. 3x's minus an x is a positive 2x. So now that I've factored it, and hopefully that was a good review for factoring, we can take this uh, equation and use the zero product theorem and say, well, what value of x would make this 0? And I could set it off to the side and write it out, but I know it's the opposite of this over its coefficient. The opposite of 3 is negative 3 over 1 is just negative 3. And I can do the same thing here. I know 1 minus 1 is 0. And if I plug those in, I'll see this 0 times anything is 0. This in here is 0 times anything is 0. So these make this a true statement. It's set equal to 0. So this problem right here is very similar. I'm going to let you try this one on your own. So give this one a try. All right, sometimes when we look at uh, quadratic equations, they're neither in standard form nor are they set equal to 0. So we have to do some work in order to get it into its standard form. Because this isn't equal to 0, I have to get rid of these parentheses. To do that, I'm going to FOIL this out. And when I FOIL it out, I get x squared minus, or excuse me, y squared minus 7y uh, plus 10, still equal to 28. These are equivalent here. So I just foiled it out and brought it down. And now I can subtract 28 from both sides. Now I can set it equal to 0, because we had to get rid of those parentheses before we could do that. So if I subtract 28 from both sides, I'm going to get negative 18. And then I look at this value, and because this coefficient is 1, I can say, what are the factors of 18 that have a difference of 7? They're different signs, because that's negative, and they have a difference of 7. So I'm ready to factor this. So the, fact, the factors of 18 that sum to 7 are 9 and 2, that have a difference of 7 is 9 and 2. One of them's negative, because a positive times a negative. The larger value is negative. This tells me what the larger value is. And now I'm ready to solve this, to find its roots. 9 minus 9 is 0, so I know this y would have to be 9. Negative 2 plus 2, the opposite of 2, would be 0. So negative 2 plus 2 is 0. 0 times anything is 0. These are the solutions. And to really check my work, I could actually bring them back to here and plug it in. So if I do that, 9 minus 5 is 4. 9 minus 2 is 7. Is 4 times 7 equal to 28? Sure is. So good job. We did it right. If I plug in negative 2, negative 2 minus 5 is negative 7. Negative 2 minus 2 is negative 4. Is negative 7 times negative 4 equal to 28? Well, a negative times a negative is positive, And 7 times 4 is, in fact, 28. So both of these solutions work. And I know it because I checked my answer. Now what about this? If we look at this, it, we have x's on both sides. Well, with anything that has a square, you want to set it equal to 0. That is standard form. So to do that, I can subtract 4x from this side. And what I do to one side, I do to the other. These are not like terms, because they have different powers. So I have x squared minus 4x. And 4x minus 4x is 0. You still set it equal to 0. And believe it or not, this is in standard form. ax squared, bx. My c value just happens to be 0. If we're adding 0, we wouldn't show that. So now I can just factor this by its greatest common factor. They each have an x. So if I factor out an x, I'm going to get x minus 4. And then I can use that 0 product theorem. If what value of x would make this 0? Well, if x is 0, 0 times anything is 0. That would be a true statement. And then this value of x is going to be the opposite of that which is a positive 4. So my two solutions are 0 and 4. Let's go back to this and check. 0 squared is 0. So I'm testing my first uh, root that I found. 4 times 0 is 0. 0 equals 0. That's a very true statement. If I use 4, 4 squared is 16. Well, 4 squared is the same as 4 times 4 if I put that 4 in there. 16 equals 16. Both of those are true statements. Both of these are solutions to this equation.
And those solutions we call zeros or roots. All right, so let's look at this right here. It says find a quadratic, or find a quadratic that has uh, root or zeros of x equals 3 and x equals negative 5. Well, what that means is if the x value is 3, it's 0 if we're writing a quadratic equation in, as its two binomials. x plus 3, well, that says x minus 3 because 3 is the 0. 3 minus 3 would be 0. It's working what we just did backwards, essentially. You're given the roots. Find the quadratic. And before, we had the quadratic, and we found the roots. So if x equals negative 5, then this value would have to be positive 5, x plus 5. If x is negative 5, negative 5 plus 5 is 0. So in order to have zeros, it would eventually have to be equal to 0. So now we can actually FOIL it out and build it as a quadratic equation in standard form. So I'm going to FOIL this out. x squared minus 3x plus 5x would be a positive 2x. Negative 3 times 5 is negative 15 equal to 0. There is the quadratic that has zeros of 3 and negative 5. How can I check my work? Plug those values in. Evaluate it. 3 squared is 9. 2 times 3 is 6. 9 plus 6 is 15. 15 minus 15 is 0. That's a true statement. What if I plugged in that negative 5? Negative 5 squared is 25. Negative 5 times 2 is negative 10 minus 15. Well, 25 minus 10 is 15. 15 minus 15 is also 0. So I know that this is the quadratic that has these roots. So this has been section 710, solving quadratic equations by factoring. Thank you for watching.